Hello my soccer universe, to the preview of the 23-24 Bundesliga season, which goes underway this Friday already with Bayern traveling up to Werder Bremen. And speaking of Bayern, I'm wearing a Bayern jersey and I've okay. gotten the questions how I choose the jersey to wear in my video. Well, it is relatively easy. I either take the reigning champions or I take the favorites. I typically go with the reigning champions and as Bayern this time around not having a red jersey at home, I decided to go with the one lighter color that I have. I think these are exciting times for the Bundesliga, to be honest. Uh, yes, when we just strictly look at the transfers, um, probably Bayern still have made the best signings, but Bayern look a little bit in shambles. Whereas I think Leipzig, although losing uh, the likes of Soberschlein and Kunku, they have mastered the art of rebuilding. I think they have very interesting additions, like the likes of Xavi Simons come to mind, but even uh, uh, Baumgartner for Austria and so on. There are some really interesting uh, signs there. Not so much for Dortmund. Um, another big point for this Bundesliga season has to be said is that this might be the first time that the second Bundesliga could catch up in terms of uh, spectators with the first Bundesliga. Because you get two relatively small clubs in Heidenheim and Darmstadt up. Although Darmstadt have a very rabid fan base. And you lose Hertha and Schalke, which are two of the biggest uh, teams in, Ger in Germany. So you have a, a second Bundesliga with those two at Hamburg, <laughs> at... Um, Nuremberg, those are already four massive, massive fan bases. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting. I, I feel, while well, I'm excited overall for what the Bundesliga is doing, and I think the standing, and I still think this is probably if you wanna get into the game, I always think the Bundesliga, uh, as, especially as a fan experience, is probably one of the best places to start because it's usually an offensive league, many goals scored, stadiums full, and relatively affordable. So uh, those are three things the Bundesliga have going for them. And if they get a title race, uh, this might be one of the best le leagues around, but very underappreciated. However, you have, of course, with uh, those two smaller teams that are coming up, um, you probably, uh, the profile is not as sharp, but it seems like that we lose uh, every other, 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 other season, we lose two, two big ones that come then back up again. So yeah, it's a cycle. I think last season was from the teams a really exciting Bundesliga. This season, in that sense, maybe not so much. But what also has happened is that, especially Bayern, have made two absolute marquee signings, namely in uh, getting Kim Min Jae from Napoli uh, to uh, solidify their defense uh, after losing Lucas Hernandez, who, let's face it, never made a big dent at Bayern. And then, of course, Harry Kane. And I think... This is a transfer that shows actually how big Bayern have actually become over the past 10 years with their dominance and them being actually a mainstay among the top teams in Europe. Getting Harry Kane is a big, big, big boost in international presence for them, especially in the English speaking world. Although I heard today that Bayern have even the most uh, fan clubs of any team in North America, but those are two really marquee signings. Now, I'm not saying that Harry Kane is gonna go and score plenty of goals. I actually think that at least at first it will take some time to get him get, get, get used to it. And have Bayern having lost already the Super Cup to Leipzig. And let's face it, this is just a pre-season friendly. There's not much more to that. However, losing at home 3 0 and Danny almost scoring the goals who might be the star of this Bundesliga season, to be, uh, frankly. And not Harry Kane, and Harry Kane having this track record as Spurs of not winning titles. The pressure is already on, there have been the headlines. Well, Kane wanted to win titles, but he arrives and the titles are leaving Bayern. It's a stupid headline, as stupid as it can be, but it tells you already the scrutiny that he will be under, and I think it will take him some adjustment. I really think, um, and it might also not work out. I mean, look at Sadio Mane. Last season we say so, so equally. Uh, that, wow, we get another Premier League star in the Bundesliga. And then it did not work quite that well. So, hold the horses. But the excitement is really, really big in Bavaria. But that also means loads of pressure. And anything but the Champions League for Bayern 
will be considered this, this this disappointment this time around despite their midfield not look, looking good the goalkeeping situation still very much in flux uh, it's gonna be interesting um, they also got Conrad Lima in central midfield which I'm not sure I mean does he make up the numbers will he be a starter so yeah a few interesting uh, signs there Dortmund who let's face it should have won the title last time around they threw it away did not actually get that many great signings. I mean, there's a matchup from Wolf, Wolfsburg who, is, who gets no one excited and Marcel Sabitzer who left Bayern and probably has a point to prove. Uh, I think Ben Zabaini from Gladbach is also an interesting signing overall. But, you know, I think Dortmund had already an established core, but you lose Bellingham. That might be. But as I said, Leipzig, I think, is the team. If a team is challenging, I have the feeling it will be Leip Leipzig. I mean, uh, you got Luis Alpenda from Lens, really good striker already. Uh, you got Benjamin Sesko from Salzburg. He's a, he's a really, really good player. Uh, you also got Christoph Baumgartner. You got Seiwald also from Salzburg. Uh, there's just a whole lot of cool stuff coming in. And I think the best one is probably Xavi Simons, although they had, had to pay very li uh, little for him. Those three teams, I think the ones that have a chance for, for, for the title, if uh, Xavi Alonso's Leverkusen, they might be the sexiest team of the uh, season, have also lost quite some uh, players. But I think a Char Xavi Alonso can turn, turn, turn around and maybe get them back into the top four. That would be definitely interesting to see. But I think already these other teams, yes, Union Berlin have been rather stable as of late. Yes, Freiburg have been rather stable as of late. But now they have to contend with Europe as again. And that is what, what I want to see. I think Freiburg definitely were reaching Union Berlin. Maybe uh, what they have shown as, as if they haven't shown that they will definitely play for European spots. But then there are also the likes of Wolfsburg and Frankfurt and potentially Gladbach who are kind of rebuilding. They might also want to push for a European spot. Um, when I look at teams like uh, Mainz, Köln, Hoffenheim, more midfieldish more midfieldish. Uh, if it's a really good season, they can make make made zero, but if it's bad, they also can implicate it. And I think when we look Werder Bremen, Stuttgart, Bochum, Augsburg, Heidenheim and Darmstadt, those are the ones that I could see being getting dragged, dragged into a relegation battle. I would hope that Werder Bremen, Stuttgart not get there, but we'll see. Uh -huh. um, who of the lower teams, who of the two promoted teams, I think could be more of a surprise, potentially Heidenheim. And if you watch Heidenheim, uh, look out for their coach because he is very, very uh, curious. He has been with the club forever and he has this tick that he has his leg always a little bit uh, to the side with, which I think is due to an in in injury. But he is a character that much is certain. So, yeah, we talked about expected final standings let's look at the first set of fixtures where i said bayern munich will open at werder bremen first i will not see that because i'm going on vacation but i have to say the first match that dishes up quite some interesting and tasty fixtures we have leverkusen against leipzig that's at least a top four battle uh that should be an interesting one uh we also have then dortmund against Köln. that's a pretty big matchup uh, I would say between two massive teams and we also get a Hessen Derby between Frankfurt and Darmstadt. Yes, it's pretty clear that Frankfurt are the big favorites and Frankfurt is probably a wild card team where you don't know where to place them at the moment. Uh, it can go really, really good, but it can also go sideways and uh, Eintracht is going back to mid table. But starting with the Derby, that's pretty big. That's pretty big and they, they played in the cup, uh, I think in the quarterfinal, that was a really exciting game. I gotta say. So yeah, what do you expect from the Bundesliga this season? As I said, I was never, over the years, never a huge fan of the Bundesliga. It was just the, the league, the big league that I could follow easiest. But I gotta say, the product that the Bundesliga gives us is a really, really, really good, good one. Uh, that I've come to appreciate a whole lot. In any case, please, it was kind of a short uh, pre-preview, but, but I thought not much more is needed please add anything you want to do or if any questions are on the uh, line below give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel and see more talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day
拜。